Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. My name is Derek and I got another wire feed welding basics video for you today. And that is how an auto darkening welding helmet works. So basically you're gonna have two different welding helmet styles that I know of, and that is an auto darkening welding helmet and a fixed shade welding helmet. Fixed shade welding helmets do not have any electronics. They are a fixed shade. You have to lift the hood up to set yourself up to make the weld and you have to put your hood down to start welding safely so that you can see the, what you're doing and not go blind very quickly and hurt your eyes very badly. The fixed shade welding helmets are extremely simple, but the auto darkening welding helmets are a little bit more complicated though, still fairly simple. And I think that there are a few misconceptions out there that I think could be cleared up in my basic knowledge of these auto darkening welding helmets. So what we have here in front of me is two different Yes Welder welding helmets. One is a far more less expensive, like under $50, maybe right around $50 these days. And I think this one's a little over $100. Uh, both pretty good welding helmets. I haven't had issues with either one of them. Of course, it's been months since I've even used this one because this is my main welding helmet now. If you'd like to pick up either of these welding helmets from Yes Welder or any other welding helmets, there's gonna be a 10% coupon on in the description below as well as a link that you can use where they will pay me a small commission of whatever your purchase is and that goes to help supporting make videos like this. So I have this less expensive welding helmet here just to compare some of the features to this welding helmet but this is one we'll be primarily looking at throughout this video. So what you'll first notice and I'm really apologize about the dirty lenses on both of these it is because I use them and I don't think that it's quite bad enough yet that I need to change it out but there's a much larger viewing window here than on the smaller one. Uh, there are two small solar panels at the top and the bottom of the iron and ink version of this welding helmet. And then a very nice large viewing window that I think is about a four and a half by four and a half. I don't remember exactly what the number is off the top of my head. And then you have about a two and a half by four and a half, I believe, with this welding helmet. So the larger viewing window is going to help you just get a much bigger, clearer picture of what you're working on. I will never be able to go back to one of these after using one of these larger viewing window. Well, helmets and they also make them where they come off the side so you can kind of see the peripherals. Lots of different versions of them but generally amongst all of these welding helmets they're going to have a viewing window that has a shade that is electronically turned on. So with that is also going to be a few sensors. There are two sensors here and I don't know that I've actually ever looked for them on this helmet. I think that there's uh, four of them. I think that they're on all four corners of the welding helmet and they sense how much light or flash is occurring in front of the viewing window and that is what turns on the shade of the viewing window so that you can have your eyes protected. So here on the side of the iron and ink you pretty much have all your controls that you're going to need on the outside. These little control panels are going to vary from brand to brand and version to version but on the iron and ink you have a sensitivity which makes the sensors in front of the viewing window either really really sensitive to any flash which mine is up pretty high and it'll even come on with grinding. So I probably do need to turn it down because sometimes that's a little annoying. And then you have a delay, which is how long the welding helmet wants to stay shaded after you are done welding or after you end the arc. If that's turned all the way up to a slow, then it's gonna take quite a bit of time for it to decide to shut off. And so you just have little dials that you can change those with. I think sending them somewhere in the middle is pretty good. Of course, you can decide where it's gonna work best for you. Then I have two other little knobs here. So the switch here on the right either allows me to grind, select grinding or welding. If it's on welding, then our viewing window is going to go shaded when it senses a flash. And then if it is on grind, it essentially turns off the welding helmet. It doesn't matter if you strike an arc or light up an arc with your welding torch, it is not going to turn on the shade. Then on this side, this comes with a nicer, more high-end welding helmet like this one is. I mean, at least high-end for Yes Welder. And that's not to badmouth Yes Welder. This has been a great welding helmet. I probably wouldn't buy anything else. I don't think I need anything else. So this switch over here on the left allows me to change between five to nine or uh, nine to 13. And so I have two different settings on this knob that I can change it to. If it's on the five to nine shades, that is gonna give me a level five shade, or if I keep turning it up, six, seven, eight, nine, which a lot of those shades are gonna be too light for a lot of welding processes. You might be in the right environment where they work for you. I don't know for sure. And then you can also select nine to 13, so it'll run a shade nine to 13, 13 being the absolute darkest. Just to compare it to a less expensive helmet here, the sensitivity and delay controls are inside the welding helmet. All you have out here is the shade control. And with this one, you only have 
I think a 9 to 13. Yes, a 9 to 13 is all that you have to choose from here. And then again, your uh, other controls are there inside the helmet. You can see the dials right in this area there by my finger. Not a great shot of it, but I think you guys get the idea. These are just about always the hardest shots for me to get whenever I do any kind of a video on welding helmets. But this is where I'm going to get to one of the misconceptions. So a lot of people believe that the solar panels on the front charge a battery in here. And maybe there are some brands or versions of welding helmets out there that is the case for. I've never used one. I've never seen one. I don't think any welding helmet around that $100 mark is going to have those. I could be wrong but I've never seen one personally. So what it really is more like is that there's a battery in here and that battery, at least on this one, is up behind this little cover here. And all that battery does is powers the sensors in order to wait for that arc to come. And so you are probably slowly gonna drain that battery over time. And that actually brings up a really good point. I have this other cheaper welding helmet here that I'm putting in front of the camera that is really just blocking the view. The battery is not replaceable on that. That is another reason why I will never buy one of those cheaper welding helmets again is because the batteries simply cannot be replaced. These more expensive ones you can easily put in. I think it's like a CR uh, 2032 or 232, whatever. One of those uh, flat kind of coin sized batteries and you can replace them and use this welding helmet pretty much for as long as the electronics are good for. But anyway, back to the misconceptions. These solar panels on the front do not need to sit out in the sun and charge. They do not charge the battery again, generally speaking, on any welding helmet that I've used. What they do do is once the arc has started, that arc is able to power then the shade and it keeps the shade on for your welding helmet while you are welding so you do not have to use battery power. The battery is just simply there to sense an arc in order to then run the solar panels to keep the helmet shaded so you're not using again battery life to keep the helmet shaded. So just again real quick to make it clear, the batteries do not get charged by the solar panels. The little solar panels on the front only keep the helmet shaded by the arc of the weld and the battery powers the sensors so that it can sense when to switch over to solar and when to shade the welding helmet. So hopefully that was all pretty clear and you got some uh, half decent information out of this. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. That's pretty much the extent of what I know about these auto darkening welding helmets. I'm sure that you could get more into depth of the uh, technology and how it works, but uh, this has been a great welding helmet for me over time. Definitely not trying to sell you on it. I'm just throwing it out there. Remember that those links are in the description if you decided to pick one up. And I do have a review on both the welding helmets I showed in this video. If you like to search my channel. In fact, the links to those videos will be in the description below as well. Really appreciate you watching. Hopefully again, you learned something from this video. I do really appreciate you watching. If you could go down and give me a big thumbs up, I would also greatly appreciate that. And of course, if you're not a subscriber, go down, click subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.